we have tried scientifically to understand the world and explain its mysteries by analyzing the smallest, smallest particles of things that exist. Inquiring down, 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 what is this thing we call flesh or call steel or stone? What is it made of? Go down into the midst of it. And that's given us a certain understanding. But only half of the understanding. Equally important is not what is the tiniest particle, but in what context is the tiniest particle. You see? In, in relation to what is it? Just as the word bark, as I showed you, has different meanings in different sentences. So, cells, molecules, atoms, have different properties in different contexts. So, what uh, the scientist equally needs to study is not simply what is anything when very, very minutely analyzed, but where is it? When is it? That makes all the difference. So do you see that a lot of people who get anxious when they hear that everything is relative have no, no need to get that anxious. Relativity isn't some kind of slippery morass in which all standards and all directions get lost. Relativity is really the soundest situation that there is. See, it's the, it's the one supporting the other. It's this thing. Do you know this? This is wonderful. X marks the spot. Imagine this going on and on. Supposing my finger were indefinitely long, both fingers, and they were doing this. See, they're just crossing each other. Now, on one side of it, it's a pair of scissors, and it cuts. What is it on the other side? Why, it's opening female legs, saying, please come in. This utter softness, utter receptiveness, on the other side, it's <coughs> but on this side, it's please, 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 yes, welcome. <laughs> and everything's based on that. See, it's <coughs> this way, sharpness, teeth, biting, spines, crab shells, all that kind of thing, you know. On the other side, it's the melting softness of life. See? They go together just like that. And goodness knows what it is on these outer two sides. I haven't, I haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> so, if you see that, if you, if you get that principle, you can feel yourself not sort of just rattling around in the world as a kind of, um, you know, somebody who's been stuck down there. But you can feel yourself going on in absolutely exact relationship with everything around you. And this is very beautiful. It isn't just that you are here looking at what's out there, like you might be photographing it with your eyes. It's that if that there wasn't there, you wouldn't be here. the outside thing that you see and the inside thing that you are are poles of the same magnet or back and front of the same coin and 
without one there isn't the other. That means, of course, then, that we are living in the midst of a world of animals, vegetables, minerals, atmospheres, astronomical bodies, that's highly intelligent. It's intelligence concentrated, crystallized in our brains. That's where it comes out, you see. In any field, let's say, let's take any field of forces, we take a chemical solution, and at certain critical points in this chemical solution, the crystals start to form. And so in the same way, the total intelligence of this whole universe crystallizes in human brains. Also in other kinds of brains. But that's where it really comes out. But it's the total intelligence of the whole field that does this. So we go with the whole thing. Interdepend with it. We don't live in an environment which is just rock, just air, just atmosphere and so on. The environment's only like that when we think about it analytically and try to explain it. But when we think of it isn't just rock and air, see, but those things go together. When you see the interconnectedness when you see in the simplest way how flowers go with bees and other insects, they don't live without them. Humans go with cattle, they don't exist without them. Plants, etc., etc., etc. When you see the intervals, the significance of the relationships between these things, it's only then when you see that that you are aware of the melody. Go back to the illustration I gave of the person who can't hear melody, who's tone deaf. He hears only a succession of sounds because he's not aware of the intervals. Now, most people are brought up to be tone deaf in respect to their own existence and the rest of the universe. They don't see the relationships. They are not aware of the unity. And so, once you, you spot that, you spot how everything goes with the thing, that you are one end and that out there is the other end and they really go together, then you may be said to be living a harmonious life. This concludes Session 3 of Out of Your Mind, Essential Listening from the Alan Watts Audio Archives. Our program continues with Session 4.